Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Fantasy Podcast, also known as PFP. Check us out online at packernet.com. Find us on Twitter and the Instagrams at underscore PF Podcast. I am your host, Jacob Buss. With me are my co-hosts. It's been far too long. Mr. Tony, Mr. Justin, and Mr. Bad Luck Paul. Real quick, I just want to take a, sh- a second and let everybody know the show as always, is brought to you by FGR Fertile Ground Ranch Discipleship Ministry. FGR, it's fertilegroundranch.org. I was going to try to go through the whole um, birth out of a burden thing, but you guys get the gist. You guys should check it out. It's a really great cause. They sent me. Yeah! They sent me. We're a, back. They Here sent me. Fine, go ahead and celebrate. <laughs> Fertile Ground Ranch sent me a really great Christmas letter. I didn't tell you guys that. I have it up in my fridge. Makes me feel like a really great person. They addressed it to to me. <laughs> wow. So, but uh, okay. thanks. Thanks to FertileGroundRanch.org because, guys, they do a lot of great stuff. It's really cool. Check them out anyways. But, hey, um, spe- speaking of addresses, do you still need mine to send me my fantasy trophy? Okay, have, moving on. Good. That is a perfect segue. <laughs> we have not, got, just so the uh, audience is aware, we have not really done any kind of pregame here other than a very loose leaf kind of bullet points that we're going to do. So, Justin, I will have you know that today I did drop the trophy into the mail to your P.O. box, Mr. Fancy. <laughs> I don't, you know. 50 50, whether or not that's true. That's Jam, I'm yeah. telling you. That's and Darren I also Paul. paid uh, Mr. Darren Yeeter, Daryl Yeeter. He was the guy that won first place in the other league besides Justin. And I'll be honest, I forgot. We uh, emailed each other right after the end of the season. And I started a new job and I got a little bit um, lost with the time. So I, I sent him now his winnings and I'll be honest. Is that why our podcast stopped? It could have been. Yeah. It could, they, you did stop paying bills. Work. Yeah. Well, I did have to, it, it coincided perfectly when get we a, lost within like a week a later, I got promoted to be the GM of a smokehouse. So I had to literally oh, just, it was convenient. I'm not going to lie. Oh. I got to, uh, to, to walk away for a minute but um how how are how are you guys doing tony let's start with you how have you been keep it brief Man, nobody great. gives a crap really let's just get through this and then we'll talk about football all right <laughs> so here to here to live in jacob's shadow in his new bushy job you know now that we're all less important yeah, uh, smoke me smoke me jacob smoking me it, not a lot's changed i guess in jacob's life zip it oh, <laughs> <and I'm bummed. laughs> All right, Justin, how about you? Uh, same old, same old. Just uh, working my life away and raising a zoo of children. Well, why don't you cry nice, about it? Nice. Paul, how, uh, Paul, if you guys have, uh, obviously, we haven't talked to Paul in a while. Nobody has, um, even his wife, because he's now has. shaved his beard, which was a, a very, very glorious, magnificent beard. And then he, he shaved oh, yeah. it into uh, a less powerful, but still powerful handlebar mustache. And now... He but can we? Can oh, and we then he went the, to the. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Can we talk about the three foot cheeseburger that he ate yesterday that Tony sent me on Snapchat? <laughs> well, did you look? I don't want to talk about it. If you scroll down in the show notes, um, you it's are there. one There's foot. A, oh, I know. I, that's what he sent me in Snapchat. But it looks like he's see, in the middle. Did you see the next one of how much he ate of that thing? It's quite a bit. It's Ridiculous. not ridiculous. He cleared like eighty percent of that thing, and it's literally <laughs> like. <laughs> If you look at that picture, it stands from his belly button to his chin. It does, for real. Yeah, yeah. It does. Which, which chin? The first or one or the second one? The second chin. The bottom one. The real, the original <laughs> chin. The OG chin. No, that's the that's two Gilbert burgers. I did the math. I went to college for a minute. Um, uh, that's cheese curds on that thing, too. Yeah. Oh. It doesn't look good, man. Um, it looks, well, we'll post that maybe on our Twitter. And um, you guys, oh, and it's will. funny. Paul looks like he's he's while he's about to eat like the biggest burger ever. He looks like somebody asked him to like get the square root of like a million and two because he's just looking <laughs> like off to the side. But anyways, uh, we'll, we'll post that. It's way better than um, Thomas Austin shirts, which, by the way, <clears throat> somehow during the draft, I got suckered into buying a Thomas Austin robe slash uh, uh, what do you call it? Apron. Yeah. So it's not. Sometimes you know, apron, not a robe. It, well, it's Thomas a, Austin. It's too long to explain. Tony doesn't listen to our network or our own podcast, so whatever. 
Do you guys have anything else you want to recap before we jump jump right into some some Packer stuff? Because let's just get into it. I would just like to say, if you're gonna start putting pictures of me on our Twitter account, you might as well just tap into Tony's uh, vault of them over there. He's he's been taking weird pictures and collecting weird pictures of me with my wife for a couple of years now. So right, it's yeah. kind of creepy. No, right, I so mean. Thank you, Between thank you, Justin. I, I didn't want to Justin, we got a lot of material, okay? Look, there's <laughs> Tony. It sounds it's like hard to herd head. you guys all in. You guys are like a bunch of uh, hogs that I'm trying to like. Herd Shut together. up, Meg. I mean, cats. You should have just said herding cats. That would have been hogging. Hogging. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> well, let's move on real quick. Justin didn't want me to bring this up, just like I didn't want certain things to be brought up. But some things just get brought up. Certain things just happen, all right? As we say, uh, Throw me the a last game that we all here. probably talked about, and we did a pregame and a last podcast was the last Not game important. against the Detroit Lions. And I just have to really quick gloss over this because it is important to segue into what we're going to talk about today. Because since we've last been on the podcast, we have missed a lot, guys. We've missed missed the end of the season the Packers missing the playoffs we've missed uh, a lot of obvious roster shakeups to say the least uh, Rogers leaving Rogers drama Pat McAfee drama uh, pooping in the woods with Jake freaking what's his nuts drama uh, you've got Rogers then apparently doesn't have Wi-Fi drama, FaceTime drama he doesn't know that you can just whatever what, I don't want to get into it uh, drama Gutekunst drama draft drama love drama and now it's kind of all gotten to this point where um, I actually feel really good. And I know Paul's going to be shocked. I am confident in the Packers. I am happy with where we're at. But to see where we're at, we had to see from where we came from. We lost that game 20 to 16. That was an absolute heartbreaker. I would argue that a lot of the things that have happened in the recent last couple of weeks are kind of an indication as to why that game fell the way it did. Uh, clearly Rogers' head has not been with this team for the last, I'd say at least two years. And I think that everybody now that's been on the Rogers train, um, certain people at the, I'm, I'm not obviously throwing any shade, you know, over the years, people have been on the Rogers train, off the Rogers train myself. I've, I've been up and down with them. I recently have been very anti Rogers. I'm ready to just see what love has to do. Uh, it has, I guess, has to offer, I should say. Um, that being said, I think when you look back at that game, dude, they did, they, they had no, no drive. That, that was a win you're in and you have all the momentum in the world. And it seemed like they just mailed that one in. And just real quick, if you guys want to comment on it, the, the biggest dagger to the heart was that if you guys are, don't remember, Jamal Williams was the one that scored the game winning touchdown. You suck. Yeah, just a little kick in the butt there. Yeah, that, that was did. like the icing on the cake. He also broke like Barry Sanders record that year. So I don't know. Justin, Fuck. are you going to remain silent? <laughs> I uh, was just sending our group chat a lovely picture of Paul. Oh, good. I just got it. His, showing his face up. I'm a big fat guy. Uh, oh, God. No, nah, man. I, I think that uh, I, as much as I've loved Aaron Rodgers over the years, I kind of was just at the point where I was just, it was about time to move on. Whether whether we get better or we get worse, I don't really care. I just am ready for the future and to move on with this <laughs> young team. I know uh, – if you had it your way, we would have had Jordan Love last year, and we probably would have won the Super Bowl by how you were talking through our podcast last right. year. Well, <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far, but I will gladly accept that I planted that love flag right into the – That's what that she sounded said. weird. Planted my love, love flag. flag. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's what she oh, said. There's a joke there about hurting, but I'm not making it. Oh, <laughs> like you well since we are right up into the rogers drama i guess let's talk about it let's go let's talk about it one thing that i saw that flashed today rogers is going to be opening up the season against the bills on monday night football i don't know if that's the league opener i would assume not because they usually do that on a thursday right but i would say um maybe that's just the jets season opener. I would have been making fun of you for a while on that, that i think the the uh <laughs> the league opener is detroit versus kansas city that's a nice one. And then I, I saw the Packers schedule got released. Oh, I don't have that in the notes, but I want to say, I think we got like, what was it? Five or six. I don't know. I think there's another Super easy um, schedule. There's well, quite a was, few primetime games. If that's what you were getting. Yes. At I was trying to get five. out of the primetime games. I believe there's another holiday game. Uh, th- uh, yeah, Thursday. Thanksgiving. Thursday, early game. I, I love that. Justin, why don't, why don't you no, stop being you, a, 
do you do you not follow the Packernet Discord chat? And I explain this that Seriously. I'm the only There's I'm not... the only one in my family that <laughs> is a diehard football fan. So when the Packers are playing during a holiday and my eyes are glued to the TV, like every Packers game since I was a small child, I catch from my wife that I'm not paying Thank enough you. attention to family. I know. And I'm well, like you. You know how this is. Like uh, this. This has been like this my entire life since I was five years old when the Packers play. I just watch the game. And I don't got time. Why I don't got time for anything you? else. I was gonna say exactly. You know what? You're getting a little mouthy tonight, Justin. I do you have to? Do you, maybe we should send her a text, guys. We have a group text. We uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of like on on, on our live stream when people pay to get JJ knocked out. We actually um, just randomly send her a Venmo and we're like, can you slap Justin just out of nowhere? <laughs> So if you ever get hit from behind, don't try it because she'll do it. I know. It's kind of, actually, I just made a thought of a really I'm good thing. I'm 100% game. more scared of Justin's wife than anyone on this podcast. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I only met her once. She's awesome, but I would never cross her. It's science. Not, I would never cross you. Uh, so anyways, guys, like I said, Jets are going to open against the Bills Monday night. We went over the cell phone service thing. That whole press conference was just awkward, dude. It was just like – that's where, again, the, the last couple of press conferences that Rogers did and the last couple press conferences that Goody did. And then when they did the whole Jets initiation thing, one thing that bugs me to all high heaven is that all of a sudden Rogers shows up to camp. He's clean cut. He looks so like physically fit. There's no ayahuasca like pooping in the woods with Jake guy. There's no like any of the YouTube like hippie stuff going on. He's like, I'm here to play football. And I know more than you. Passes. And then he. I'm going to make, I want to work with the young guys in the off season and get to know them. It's like, what, 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 what? you mean? Like the same thing you could have done last year, bro. Exactly. All of a sudden he loves the media. He's very professional with the media and it's just like, okay, well, all right. I see what's going on here, but it's, it is a little interesting as well. Like, have you seen the parallels with him and Brett, how they almost to the year, to the exact, you know, come in, you're following a blah, 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 following a starter, get, you know, into the next game you start for the next however many years you leave the team you go to the jets for i mean it's just kind of a little so bit paul too much. you should have uh aaron Rodgers in no time i was seems gonna like say. it seems like it's trending that way i'm so i mean i i'm it's been an interesting uh ride to watch you guys uh last season just hate the team then all of a sudden you guys were winning the super bowl then the lions thing happened the Aaron Rodgers thing, uh, and you you guys just move on. You know, you guys move on quickly. I'll give you that. Uh, most Packer fans are pretty fair weather, but you you three have stuck with your team. I'll say, congratulations, guys. Through the highs and the lows, buddy. Yeah, You're my boy, Blue. Oh, are you like fan or loyal? Paul? Oh, I was gonna ask. You guys, well, Paul. you guys drink the Kool Aid. I mean, it's not the high. You guys don't see lows. Our Kool Aid gives us championships. What does your Kool Aid give you? Uh, Suspension. Heartbreak. Yeah, heartburn maybe. Yeah. Are they ill-tempered? You don't, you don't pass your drug test. I know that if you drink that Kool-Aid. I'm just Couple saying. Couple historians on a love boat with a cool oh. ship ride. Heck yeah, buddy. It's science. Yeah. I don't know if the love boat thing's going to work out well for you guys now that your quarterback's name is Roses or lo- Love or something. Wow. Almost. Got it. Uh, <laughs> what I want to talk about real quick, though, is that the I went on Spot Track. Is it Spot Track? Spot Track, whatever it's called. Um, as of today, it says the estimated cap space of the Green Bay Packers. So that basically was it 16 million, 16 and a half. So not a lot, but I would like to. Th- I, I'm so bad about the um salary cap, and honestly, I think that anybody that pretends they're an expert at the salary cap is just a complete liar. But um, that. I believe that cap number has accounted for the rookies being signed. Justin, do you know if that's true or? I believe it does. I think they have to account for the rookies. Where do you look at what? Where well, you it looks like uh, rookies have signed as of May eighth, May fifth. It looks like all of them signed. So I got this number today. So I don't know. Maybe oh, I'm crazy. Man. We'll look at it. But either way, sixteen million. I mean, you're not going to sign away your whole uh, rookie draft class and waste that away i would guess that let's say that we haven't signed our draft class i would guess at the least we have 10 million um would you guys look to see anybody that we're trying to sign as far as a free agent and if so where and why and who to me i'm very happy with how young this team is i'm excited as all get out because it's 
You know, it might be so rough I, this year, but let's go. I know it, I know it's not the most popular thing right now, but he's got a lot of experience with the team. And we need a lot of safety help, so I would think that bringing back Adrian Amos would probably be one of the smarter ideas. Oh, yeah. He knows I that like he that. didn't have his best season last year, so I, I think he I don't think he'll come back no cheap, doubt, cheap, no but no I think doubt. he'll come at a reasonable price. Do and you I guys really both remember arguing with me when I said we should have Amos next year, and you guys both just told me I was retarded for this? I, you can look back on that, but I would say that you probably can't get me on that one. You might get Jacob because I don't believe Tony big, can remember what I've he been, ate for lunch today. So I don't I've always been a big hey, Amos hey. fan. Really like I him. might be hammered drunk right now, but I'm pretty sure that I <laughs> argued with one or both of you guys about I this. Just did. I, don't know, man. I, I, all right, well, I'll look back at the records. Considering Tony literally has to still text us, hey guys, where do I find the link for the podcast? Because <laughs> you didn't send it, Jacob. Well, okay, that's a mystery. It, but, Favre, in other news, says he's no longer going to sue Pat McAfee for whatever awesome. news that is. That's pretty awesome. But uh, let's go over some real quick key offseason departures for the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, there's this guy. He's been around for a minute. I can't remember his name. Something like Schmarin Modgers. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Uh, like Tony just mentioned, Adrian Amos is testing the free market agency. But I think that hopefully he'll be back. I think we lost Jaron Reed. Uh, Tanyan's gone. Lazard's gone. Lewis gone. Crosby, probably gone. Cobb gone. Lowry gone. Barnes gone. I mean, honestly, that's kind of a who's who of like, I don't really care other than <clears throat> maybe Amos. Um, I, I love Big Dog. Lazard did his thing. You know, he's going to go over to it, which by the way, we haven't even talked about this. <laughs> the Packers don't give Rogers enough weapons and then Rogers goes over to the Jets and he mimics almost I mean to a shockingly stupid like laughable amount of the Green Bay Packers like B squad I, I would struggle maybe even the C squad um do you guys have any comments on that I mean am I they signed what's that stupid tackles name that everybody what Billy uh, Turner Billy Turner Billy he's in from my, the Broncos Oh, he's, he's from somewhere. I don't know where. <laughs> Nobody will claim him. He was on like the Dolphins, I think. Us, the Broncos. Everybody's like, nah, nah, we didn't have him. No. Uh, somehow he keeps getting starts in the NFL. I, I don't know. But he's got uh, another friend of, uh, of his with Cobb. And then who else um, is over there? Somebody told me that even like the backup Malik Taylor or something like that's over there. I mean, dude. All righty then. Yeah, I don't any, know how that happened or why. Any, any thoughts? I mean, is uh, do you guys think that it's going to be Lazard and Garrett Wilson just running the league, just running train on the league with Cobb at at at, <laughs> at slot? Just mm, yeah. Hold on, real question for you: Would you take Watson or Garrett Wilson right now? Watson or Garrett Wilson? Watson, one hundred percent. I'm saying Garrett Wilson. Uh, he's a better receiver, uh, and I think that. Uh, He's a better like all around receiver. No. Yeah. As a true number one. He's Sorry. a true number one. We've still got a lot left to see from Christian Watson. So I Watson's can maybe answer a, that question. He's still a ball year. of clay, a freak. And you've seen what he can do. He can grab a, just a random dump off over the middle and just run it, outrun everybody for 55 yards. And just I'll tell you what, though, outside of athletic ability, I guess he scored Christian seven Watson touchdowns in come- three games. Christian Watson comes into Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers doesn't even want to hang out with him, but then he goes no, to exactly. the Jets and he's just going to hang out with all these these younger guys. Well, I would, I'd be willing to bet that Christian Jackers, Watson. Please. That, that was one of the funniest the things. The New York Jackers. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's the, it's oh, either, the New York Jackers. The Jackers. Oh, yeah. That's going to <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's move on here to the I draft. I didn't know Justin had some funnies in him, but he dropped that and it made me laugh. Jacob and the Herden Jackers. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Meg. So the Packers had quite a few picks. Not going to lie. It was um, – I love it. I mean, it, in my wildest dreams, you know, you do all those um, those mock drafts and you think, oh, this will never happen and that will never happen. And it didn't. A lot of it – well, not maybe for you, Justin, but for a lot of people it did. If you guys remember, I went on uh, Clayton's podcast and I said that I would love to get two of the top tight ends. And I said, Tucker Craft was one of my favorites. Did not mention Luke Musgrave, but I said, I did want two of the top like six tight ends, which were in the draft, which is very rare. This you was are obsessed with tight ends, aren't you? I think, mm, I think this is yes, the sir. second year in a row. Tight, but yeah. They really, they went after, <laughs> Show your they went after solid positional value. 
Well, well, real quick. So let's just break this off. Uh, Lucas Van S, number 13 overall, DN Iowa. I originally was kind of pumping the brakes on him when I, like originally, originally, I was very, very high into him. Every single mock draft I did, I was like, Van S, boom, lock it in. Iowa so guy. hold on, hold on. What did you, hold on. The day of the draft, what did you, before the draft, what did you say about Lucas Van I was stupid and I said, oh man, I really like the guy. He's a freak, but he's never been a starter the whole time he's been at Iowa. Well, me being stupid and not reading enough and Paul being as stupid as he is, thinking he's got me in a gotcha coma oh, moment right suck. now. No, I, don't I have realized right that. I think you, you told Tony at... he was stupid when Tony said that was a good pick. Hold on, Tony. I'm getting there. I looked I at there. these snaps overall when you look at PFF, and he had by far way more snaps than any other lineman on the D line. Iowa has oh. a very uh, strategic and very storied history of making sure that their older collegiate athletes their seniors their juniors have starting uh priority over the younger athletes which again that's what you do if you want to have a really respectable organization so he would not start and he did not start for most of those games but he'd come in he's an absolute freak the guy's basically a hockey player who just transitioned into playing football like three years ago and he's still growing into his body he's an absolute physical specimen they call him hercules absolute crazy freak he's got a bull rush he's got a little bit of a an un an unskilled pass rush set right now. I'm but surprised if you get... you're saying this so eloquently with something in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there, Mister uh, No Mustache. You, anyways. Hold on, I have a follow up question. Uh, follow up question. <laughs> Today, Justin, Junior. Yeah, after the draft number. You know, because I was talking to you guys. <laughs> I Oh, yeah, I just wanted the listeners to know right. how you felt. It, admittedly, saying. when they made the pick, I kind of lost my cool. I don't hate the pick. <laughs> I kind of lost my I don't, cool? I don't hate <laughs> the pick. I, I, think, I think he's going to be a solid player. The The part that made he's me gonna be amazing was because JSN was my guy, and I really, I really didn't even think he was going to fall to us. I thought for sure someone's going to take him before us. And then he fell to us. And then we didn't take him. So I'm fine. I'm fine with the LVN. No, that's not true. I'm fine with the LVN pick. And I think, I think he's going to be awesome. I just, I don't want to look back at it in like two years and JSN is just lighting the league up right now. And, and we have like another, like not to take it back to Rashawn Gary, because don't. now, now hindsight, he's like my favorite player on exactly. the team. But when we so. made that pick, like he was a project pick, you know, it took three years for him to become that. I want someone awesome right okay. now well i think that they're uh you guys are sleeping on him because he's not just an edge the guy is to he can play a five technique he can play three technique he very much showed out i'm not i'm not sleeping on him i like i said i you sure know a lot about him right now once i calm down everybody <laughs> once i calm down and just slept on it i woke up i watched a bunch of his tape and, and i'm i am very excited about the pick i think he's going to be a super solid player good team. now that it has the justin's mustache stamp of approval <laughs> let's move on to luke musgrave second overall pick for the packers uh 11th overall in the second round tight end out of oregon state a guy that i i, I like i said i loved all the tight ends oregon. i like craft i really liked zach coons i liked all these freak nasty kind of people and for some reason he kind of was off my radar and it's because he did not get a lot of reps and but here's the thing (laughs) as far as all the freaks of the freaks go luke musgrave was like six six or whatever ran like a four he was a four five forty he was clocked at the senior bowl as the only tight end that ran 20 miles per hour on the field so he is an absolute like just flash with that size with that speed he's willing to block he's not great at it the second other player we picked in the second round Jaden reed michigan state wide receiver this is one that definitely got me scratching my head on the live stream you can see me being like what well, i don't i'll admit i had no idea who he was but i am not worried about that because nobody knew who he was even ryan said that he completely whiffed on him a lot of people whiffed on him clayton whiffed on him uh pff whiffed on him everybody whiffed on him but when you watch this dude it's on science. tape holy crap he looks amazing any thoughts on him he might actually be my favorite player that we drafted i, think I don't get gonna he, be... he had some injury issues i think which maybe interrupted his draft stock but when you watch so, I mean, so supposedly what happened was he went back to school for one more year before he tried to enter the draft to get in the nfl and the offense was just awful there and it just really hurt his draft stock but if he were to have been drafted last year he would have been expected to be drafted where he was already. hold on are you telling me that someone's highlight tape makes him look good <laughs> not yours not yours bro 
That's not it nice. It's show, it's it's show Paul tapping out of a, you know. Dude, can we make a burger. highlight tape of Paul at the gym? This brings up a great point. Oh, we should. <laughs> hey, Let's there make are... a hype tape for everybody of fantasy. Oh, we have uh we have listeners that can make real like they're really good at doing stuff. Like Justin kind of with um his graphics. If somebody can make us a hype video, if we send you some raw footage of Paul just <laughs> it. basically, if we were to shop Paul to an NFL team, this is the highlight reel. Oh yeah. my god, we're doing this, guys. We're doing this. How we recruit NFL players to our podcast? No, for 100 percent Paul, we're gonna clock your 40 tomorrow morning. No, guys, we're gonna do this. Tony, water don't boy me, audition. Don't let me clock don't let my me. 40. Oh, no, no we're clocking you your 40. We're gonna that. do your 225 no. bench reps. <laughs> We're going to do your vert. <laughs> yes. And then we're going to train you through the off season. And we're going to see if we can put Paul on the, <laughs> on a, on a, what do you, what's have past you, a, a five star? Have you ever <laughs> seen a 37 second 40 yard dash? I was going to say, <laughs> we're going to put Paul in the draft, whether it's the I Special Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't matter, dude. Years, Real people don't need him. All right. Real What's quick. that doctor out in California everyone uses? <laughs> Paul's Paul's a, a SQ or whatever. His his off the charts. And his wanderlock <laughs> off the charts. His wander- He's he's got this. Uh, so, anyways, real hands quick. on that. I'll take the test. Oh, awesome. I got this. I want to touch you on. Bets. What do you think my vertical actually is? What do you got? Fifteen inches? Negative two. <laughs> no. <laughs> Negative two. Fifteen inches. Get the out of here. Come on. Oh, you guys can't even give me fifteen inches. Are you serious? Stop I'll it. T- no. Stop it. No. Come on. No. Loyal listeners might remember Tony son Mason. He has field day tomorrow. Maybe that's where we go. We just go oh, there. And just, we crash that party like I, old school. I just race a bunch of kids. Hey, well, listen, that's the only thing you're gonna, thing we're gonna win. To Unless Paul starts identifying as something else, he might not win another race in his life. <laughs> Except for the to the buffet line. Hey, oh, all right. Let's talk about the uh, Vikings draft picks. Well, roasted. Uh, what do you think about Jordan Addison, uh, Paul? As the uh, resident Viking fan. What, I'm a little bit nervous because you guys are picking another receiver in the first round, and that seems to work quite well for you. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I actually did kind of like the pick. Um, I don't know. The uh, I'm just down on the whole. You think he's a number? Season, guess, you think so. he's a day one replacement for Thielen because that's what he's basically drafted um, for, right? What's your other guy? Yeah, uh, th- Osborne. KJ Osborne. I, I I mean I don't know I maybe he's uh, he's 170 pounds that that's my concern our cornerback that we drafted God if you round, could give him 30 years pounds Paul he'd be what he'd be good if you could he'd transplant be. 30 or your pounds into his body yeah. <laughs> that'd be it I'd make that deal I'd sign that deal I give him uh, pounds. what do you think about Makai Beckman uh I'm sorry Makai Blackman he's Mekhi also Beckman. 170 pounds dude yeah, and I he's also know, like... you guys picked him literally a hundred picks before the consensus ADP had him drafted how do you yeah that's weird right yeah I don't know I don't I don't know <laughs> if I like our new GM I don't, I don't know and he's supposed to be known for trading back I don't see a lot of that in this draft here it was just I don't know Oof. what's his name Queasy Quizium. what <laughs> He's making me queasy, yeah. Wow. Oh, How about bunch. new? And real yeah, quick, I guess uh, I'm weirdly kind of worried about what the Lions did. I, I did not like what they did as far as as far as uh, draft capital and draft like positional value. What they did with the first couple of picks, they went Jameer Gibbs with the 12th overall pick in the first round, which I get it. I mean, you're, you're trying to upgrade. They traded uh, what's his face which was kind of a really slap. They traded him away for like a ham sandwich, basically, which is kind of insulting. 25 pick, right? Yeah, like a fourth <laughs> 2025. I Paul could get traded away for that, I'm pretty sure. If we get him up to speed for we'll this see. draft. We'll see after the combine. Exactly. Uh, and then they got Campbell, though. A good, I'd say they argued the best linebacker in the draft. And then they got Laporta, who is, I think, the best yard after uh, – you know, the yak kind of tight end. And then they got Brian Branch, maybe the steal of the draft to fall to that. And then they got Hennon Hooker, who could possibly be, I don't know, they got Jared Goff, you know what I'm saying? Sit behind Goff for a year, maybe two. And then they got Broderick Martin, Martin a very, very, very good uh, D tackle very late there. So I don't know. And the, the Bears, again, I don't like the Bears draft at all. I'm not really worried about it. Any thoughts on that, guys? 
Was that tight end you mentioned? One of those guys you said fell into your top six? Laporta. I loved him. Okay. Otherwise, I mean, Kraft, Tucker Kraft was my guy. I love Tucker Kraft. And if you guys listen to Tucker Kraft's interview, post him getting drafted, oh, my God. he. You know, you know what's even cooler is that he's uh, banging Cole Komet's sister. Nice. Who's banging Cole Komet's sister? Who's not? Allegedly. Listen to you, Justin. Justin talked about it for three days. I know. Be nice, man. Tucker Craft. Tucker so Craft is the man. Although, uh, did you guys hear about that news thing that just happened with him? No. No, dude. Tucker Craft got bit by a poisonous snake, and then three days later, the snake died. Stop it. Is that like a Chuck Norris joke? No, that's a Tucker Craft reality. It's not a joke. This is like when Jacob got bit by the <laughs> what are the, what was that spider you supposedly got bit by, Jacob? It's not supposedly, it's a brown recluse and almost had to have my arm amputated, all right? People thought yeah, okay. I tried to cut myself for like four years after that. Oh, real quick, one thing I do want to highlight before we get out of here. <laughs> out of the what we got, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven draft picks, if I'm not stupid, which I am. Uh you out of that RAS, the RAS that was in the green basically a uh, eight or over, which means you're an athletic freak out of those 11 players, eight of them had a eight or above the two that didn't, or maybe what I think could be the two best picks of the draft that Jaden Reed and Carl Brooks, who I think may have been the, the ultimate slide of the draft. And then the third was Anders Carlson who's a kicker. So obviously he doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. uh, real quick, North predictions. I'm going to say that the Packers are going to go 10 and seven worst case scenario. I think Jordan Love has a very solid first year. We're going to have a more run heavy offense with more of a actual LaFleur offense, which I'm excited to see. I don't know what we're going to, there's no more Rogers mode uh, audibling out of that kind of stuff. Um, so I would expect the defense as well to be fast, to be violent. We have, like eight number one draft picks on that thing tony what do you think and we got only like three minutes let's wrap this up uh i hope that you're right i am on the negative nancy side of things and i'm worried we're gonna have a down year but i'm gonna leave it at that okay i know more than you justin uh i'm gonna eat on the side of caution a little bit but i think i don't think you're super far off i'm not i'm probably not expecting 10 wins, but something similar to last Here, I'll year. Go, I'll go on this limb. I think that we're either first, worst, second in the NFC North. I don't want to necessarily nail down a so anything but third. loss record. Is that what you just said? Is anything but third? That's what I'm, I thought I heard, too. I'm just – yeah. I'm just saying I, I think that people are sleeping I was on a us. gambler. They're sleeping man. on I'd us. say we'd probably get <laughs> – Anywhere between first and fourth and then <laughs> I'll take that bet. All right, Paul, what do you think? I think Jordan, you heard it here first. Jordan loves the pro bar this year. Oh my gosh. No, I Ooh. said that first. You're just piggybacking off of me. When did you say that? All last year. All last year you said Jordan Love's gonna be a pro bowler next No, year? I said that it's time for Jordan Love to take over because he's shut up. All right. <laughs> all right it looks like uh yeah let's get out of here we only got about one minute 45 seconds guys it was an absolute pleasure to get to know uh all of you again i, I forgot what you guys we were gotta like. get to hogging we never god i hate you guys <laughs> every now and then you know what i was gonna talk about this but uh there's no you reason to get into it first every now and then you know if a golfer hits a hole in one it's amazing <laughs> eagle it's great a birdie oh, great par Apart for the course, a double bug, it happens. If you want to start making fun of a golfer for hitting like <clears throat> uh, quadruple bogue, or maybe he falls <laughs> out of his golf cart before he gets there kind of situation, yeah, it happens once or twice, but forever he's going to win that green jacket. That being said, everybody have a great night. That's going to do it for another episode of PFP. For those that don't know what's going on right now, good. Yeah. Hopefully you never yeah. Will. I'm a big <laughs> fat pig. Have a great day. And uh, as always, go pack go. F Tom Brady hurts me. Oh, we're never going to let that die. Like Tom Brady's soul, which is sold to the devil. PFP out. Have a great day, guys. Later, skaters. <laughs>